Hello everybody, welcome back. Um, today I want to talk about safety, uh, primarily firearm safety, especially if you have children or if you travel a lot. Uh, there's a lot of great options out there. This has been my go-to for handgun safety around the home. Um, I recently uh, purchased a, a quick access safe, um, which I, actually fits inside this one. Uh, which is how I carried it out here, but um, I, I wanted to go over some of the different styles of safes and uh, tell you about some of the struggles I've had and a new, uh, hopefully better option that I'm going to unbox, which is the LifePod 2.0. So this is a biometric safe. Well, what does that mean? So there's a button here that turns it on and then a reader that reads your fingerprint. So I'm going to turn it to face me so that I can do this right. I'll turn it this way. So you hit the button. Uh, don't anybody look at my fingerprints or you'll have access into this one. Um, this is the, the safe that I bought recently. Uh, it's a stop box. And basically there's uh, four keys on the front and an open button on the side. And I bought this to have quick access to get in and get a handgun on the nightstand or whatever. Um, I was very frustrated, um, as in the third day, I think I had it. Uh, my seven-year-old son found it and, you know, started asking me about it and I told him what it was. With nothing in it, I asked him if he could open it. In about 30 seconds, he had it open. Um, so I changed the code because I think he might have seen me do it. So I changed the code, which you can do by rearranging the keys uh, in this uh, lock mechanism here. Uh, another 10, 15 seconds, he had it open again. So uh, I think this thing is useless, basically. Um, I really wanted it to work because it provides fast access, which is, and it's uh, easy to do in the dark without any lights coming on, no beeping, no buzzing, no batteries. Uh, everything that they advertise is good. It just doesn't work with children. Uh, my four-year-old daughter might struggle with it for a little while, which is, I guess, better than nothing, but I'm not going to trust it. So I'm setting this one aside. Um, again, this one's great, but I travel a lot. Um, not flying, not um, mostly road trips. And I'd like to know that if I go someplace on my road trip that... I shouldn't take my weapon into that I can secure it in the vehicle and um, and be okay so I used to have one similar to this mounted in one of my old trucks permanently um, that worked fine but I want something more mobile now uh, so this is a really good option uh, it comes it, it has a 9 volt battery this is a stack on brand it also has a key if the battery ever fails if you don't use it very much or forget to change it um, I think there's a light inside as well when you first open it um, that, that you can toggle on or off. But anyway, that's this thing. It works great. It's a little more secure. It can be bolted down uh, from the inside uh, through the mounting holes so you can make it very secure on the wall. Um, although I've noticed the spring is not strong enough to open it in the vertical position. So if it is wall mounted, it would need to be sideways. But um, anyway, this is a really good option. I've liked it, but again, it doesn't do everything that I want it to do. So we'll move on to what we're here to talk about today. So I recently purchased the LifePod 2.0. They, this is made by a company called Voltec. Uh, if you're searching for this and you find this on my channel, I'm Quite certain you already know who makes it and have already seen all the stats and probably watched other people's unboxing videos as well. This is the larger of the two life pods they make. Um, I did get the one of the special edition models. I forget what color this was called. I think it's sandstone, but it comes with the pick and pluck foam. So let's dive in. The package is still completely sealed up. I just got it today. So let's tear into it and see what it does. Or what it comes with. All right. 
guys. Easy to open box. So that's good. Change in air pressure may hold lid down if lid does not open. Lift keyhole cover to relieve pressure. Good to know. Like I said, I'm probably not going to be flying much uh, in the near future, so much less without something like this. So I'm not too worried about change in pressure. So first thing is check out the safe here. Comes wrapped up, I guess, to protect the edges and corners. Set that off to the side. Got a nice protector on the label here. Very nice, professional looking. Latches look good. Really snap into place well. There's no holes for mounting to anything. I'm not too concerned about that, but um, just you may be. I don't know. All right. Let's see what else it comes with here. So it looks like this is the organizer foam. Yep, this is the the pluck foam. So I'm not ready to dive into that yet. I want to see what my options are for placing things first. Um, here we go. We've got a. Setup instruction manual. We'll dig in here. Okay, here's the Velcro for lashing things down to the um, the shelf. I say Velcro. This is not actual Velcro. This is uh, some other brand. Looks like looks like good stuff. Here's the cable. Again, this is good for traveling, uh, for vehicle, anything you may need to secure it to. Set that aside for now. Shock cord. I guess that's another way to keep things on the tray that is inside. The keys, make sure not to lose those. Backup keys cannot lock LifePod. Use keys to unlock in case, uh, unlock the case and event the battery dies. So this is not a locking feature, it's unlock only. Instruction manual, setup, scan code. All right. fumble around with this a little bit till we figure it out here. We'll figure it out together. That is in there good and tight. Maybe that's that pressure we were talking about earlier. All right, use the tool. Okay, now we're open. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up with the key. You can see the key lock here and a micro USB port for charging. Sorry, I don't think it's actually for charging. I think it's for uh, emergency opening only. There we go. Okay, it had a little bit of suction to it. So we did have that issue. Okay, life pod. Here we go. Remove tray for larger items, which I'm pretty sure most handguns will need the tray removed, so I will not be using the tray much. Although it does look like there are options that you can put handguns in the tray. So this is a handy little card to have to show the potential setups. Um, 
I did not get this for one of those EDC guru things. That's not really my thing. Um, it's another round of pick and pluck foam. Good to know. So I've got two in case I screw one up. Here's the EDC tray. It does fit in there nice. Seems pretty sturdy. Wonder, I've never seen anyone try to Yeah, it doesn't look like it fits too well uh, upside down. We won't be doing that. I wondered through all the videos if uh, if you get more space if you flip it, but it doesn't appear to be the case. This egg crate is very close. Um, so very, very tight against the bottom of the tray. You're definitely not putting a weapon underneath the tray with this egg crate in place. We'll see what's under there. Fairly thin, maybe half inch egg crate here. Okay. And then, as I've seen, there's two eighth inch thick foam layers underneath that. So, just checking. That is still nowhere near enough room to fit a weapon. Okay, so tray most likely is not for me. Um, this edition, as I said before, um, I'll just show you. I was gonna move the camera, but I'm not. Uh, this is going to have the, okay, so this has, you can hear that, that's very secured in there. That does look like real Velcro. If it's not Velcro brand, it's matching. Um, so the inner lid section has a soft, pattern to it and a hard, the rough side um, is on the back of this organizer. So organizer I've been told fits magazines or seen that it fits magazines, um, business cards, whatever you need in the lid. Um, the 2.0 has a, I assume this is a magnet here. Yeah, definitely a magnet. So this one is fork proof for opening, so that's a good thing. Seems like the older models are not. Um, let's spin this around so you can see a little better. Here's the battery box. Um, as stated, there's no battery, so I'm going to go get one of those here in a second. Um, what do we got? Key lock on or off. So right now, key will not open life pod when on. Reverse, picking. oh, prevents picking. So right now it's off, so the key will open it. So that's exactly how I got in just now. Um, let's see, the cable. Looks like it fits on either side here. snaps into place it seems. Felt magnetic at first. I don't think it is. That is a nice snap. This side seems to be tight. Very tight. But the good news is it's not loose and flopping around making noise when you get it in there. So that's good. Okay. It goes off to the side. I am going to go get a 9 volt battery because that's what it takes, and we'll be right back. Okay, sorry about that. The battery is uh, something I left up at the house. So, <clears throat> um, again, we're walking through this for the first time together. So, I'll plug this in. And it beeps, which I immediately don't like. but at least it lets you know that the battery's working. Uh, let's take this key out. Okay, keys are out. Outside the safe at the same time. Um, 
Okay, so let's see what's next. Okay, just took a little sidebar and read the instructions here. Uh, not something I normally do, but since I'm filming this, I want it to go smooth. <clears throat> okay, so uh, in order to lock or unlock, the first step is always to, well, I'll say to lock, the first step is always to compress the lid down. That ensures that the slot is in the right place for the pin to go through. Okay, so we'll hit the lock button. There we go, so you gotta hold it, I suppose. Okay, so it's locked. I'm gonna open the compression straps and definitely not coming unlocked. Okay, so I read the instructions like I said. Master combo is uh, you wake it up, one, two, three, four. So we just heard it unlock. Then we can undo the compression straps and she opens right up. How nice is that? Okay, so once again, close it, close the compression straps and hold lock. Nice, quiet, quick. Wake it up. Pretty fast. Okay. Beautiful. All right. Now, here is the question I have struggled with the most. Um, what fits? Right? Um, there's... I've found images and videos that, that showcase a number of firearms, but I am, uh, I own a Palmer 80 G19. Um, it is unloaded, I know that. Um, so let's, I have a red dot sight on it. So let's see how that looks. Fits in nice, but I also have a suppressor that I would like to keep in here. So I can already tell with the light installed, it will not fit, right? So this is one of the biggest cans you can get. It is the Liberty um, Cosmic. So it's a 45. This is a nine millimeter, but it sounds great. I love this can. Um, so let's see if removing of the light, which is a TLR3, if that helps. If we can find a way to make it fit. And it doesn't look like it will. Okay. If we take the booster off the can. All right, so we can make that work, okay? It just means that it's in pieces, okay? So again, G19 Polymer 80, Holosun Red Dot Sight with silencer or suppressor uh, sights, night sights on there. Cosmic 45, which again is one of the biggest suppressors. You can get the light, and if I remove the booster, it fits. I'm gonna keep tinkering with this, but at least I know that I can put it all in. Okay, so I've been playing around with the different uh, arrangements here, and I have found a way that this fits just fine. Um, with or without the egg crate, or I guess pluck foam, doesn't matter. Um, leaving the booster on the pistol, the G19 fits, so that's important. Um, and then the suppressor fits in here with a little bit of slot, a little wiggle room. Now that's okay. Now, uh, as others have stated in other videos, there's something I want to dispel here, uh, at least for the double stacks, is that having magazines in the organizer lid thing, um, you cannot close this it will not go there's there's no way that that's going to close so it's a great idea um 
the point of this thing is that it's small and sleek. I get that. That that is important. Um, for me, I'm okay having magazines on the side. I don't need to store my magazines inside this thing with the way I travel. Um, I don't mind having magazines outside this kind of locked storage um, in, in, in the vehicle somewhere else. That's fine. Um, I'm more concerned about the firearm itself and again the suppressor. So um, you can see I removed the magazine here. That's, that's what allows the wiggle room. Um, there is room to toss the G19 magazine in there or uh, one of these bigger uh, 17 mags, which is 17 rounds of 9mm. So um, take that into consideration if you're looking to purchase this and fly with it. That may be a no-go for you. Um, although I think if you're flying, the ammo has to be separate anyway. I'm not sure. I don't do that uh, all my hunting trips and whatnot that I've been on where I've taken firearms. I have driven. I uh, just prefer to have all my stuff with me. So uh, obviously go to a different continent. Uh, the, the drive would be a little rough. So um, yeah, more information for you to arm yourself with. Again, um, this is one option for safes. And uh, if you do consider carrying and if you do need to store your weapon occasionally, if you go to work, um, during the day, if you're still, you know, not a work from home type application, um, and you need to store your weapon in your vehicle while you're at work and you choose to carry outside of work, this would be a great option for that. Um, obviously you don't carry with suppressors. This may be not important for a carrying individual, uh, so much as a farming individual like me. Um, where I'm traveling back and forth between properties and uh, want protection for all of it. Um, I don't want any of this to get in the wrong hands and safety, again, for my children on uh, the nightstand even is very important to me. So I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, like, subscribe, share, notify, tweet this to your friends, whatever you do on social media. I'm not up on that but go for it um appreciate the love there'll be a link for this on amazon in the uh, description below so please check that out if you're interested um there are different models um there's a a lower model that only comes with the egg crate foam and does not have the pick and pluck i will say i was surprised that there's two of them two pick and plucks in, in this case. Um, they may be, they are slightly different. The one in the bag is larger. I don't know if you can see that. Let me, let me pull that out. I have a feeling one of these is for the tray potentially but these are different. They do have 3M tape on the outside, so you can stick it to the inside of the box and it stays there. Um, but look, when you, when you align the front edge here, you can see that the tapers are slightly different. This one's slightly larger. And then on the back end, uh, also the cutout here is different. Um, I might do a little investigating here and see what this is for. Set the tray. The smaller one does fit very snug inside the tray. So that's got to be what this is about. So, uh, this is new. I've not seen this on any other videos. Um, one of the pick and pluck foams is for the tray itself. And the other is likely, yeah, that's a, it's a good fit inside the, the actual unit. So let me set this stuff aside real quick. So 
So yeah, that's definitely a snug fit in there. So it will glue to the sides with the 3M tape and the tray sits on top. Um, let's see how tight this foam is. Room to spare, very sloppy. Okay, well there you go. Learn something new. Let me see if we can get a good, let's see there's probably a good eighth inch here at the bottom. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. There are two pick and pluck foams. One is intended for the tray, one is intended for the, the main body of the safe. Okay, we're learning things together, right? Trying to share the knowledge. Okay, again, if you like, like, subscribe, tweet, do all the things, and uh, come back for the next video. Love you guys. Y'all have a good evening.